Hey folks and welcome back. Uh, this is the third part of looking at doing substance designer type stuff in Houdini. I'd like to look at how we can get different information out of COPS. So we could bring out a bit of color or some other kind of uh, map values that we could uh, map onto our surface. At the moment we're not trying to build anything in particular. I think I set out to build something that was vaguely rock-like. So we could try and refine that a little bit more as we move along as well. I'm going to take just one second to change my uh, desktop layout. Uh, so what I'd like to be able to see is my compositor and my scene view at the same time. I'm going to split the panes uh, top and bottom just here like this. And then let's change this guy over to be the composite view. And it's jumping over to the top level composite view. Uh, I created a cop network inside in SOPS. So I need to jump it back in here. And now we can see the composite down the bottom and I can see my scene view up the top. I also am going to split this pane left and right. I'm going to hook up this guy, this, this network view here, to my scene view. So the way to do that is uh, right click where you see the little pin. I'm going to set this one to one and right click here and set that one to one. Okay, so those two are linked together now. Right click over here. We're going to put you to two and we will put you to two as well. And now these two are connected up together. With that done, let's try and build off a little branch for our network here. Uh, we're going to build out a color map. So we'll put down a color node here and we get a couple of different options for doing uh, color stuff. This is basically going to create a constant color. You can go and pick a color and I'll just pick, I guess, sort of a sandy color for now. I'll put down another composite here. And I'm going to take the output here, which is uh, creating our map. And I'm going to put that into A and I'll put my color into B. So at the moment, it's just really putting one over the other. So we can go down through them and we can try out different types of looks. Um, and some of them are going to be much stronger than others. But you can dial them up and down as well. So you've got a foreground weight and a background weight. Pull down the background weight here. So I'm getting rid of A in this case. And I'm getting rid of B in the background weight. So A over B. Uh, just for the moment, I'm going to leave it on an add. But you can uh, experiment with different ones. Now this is very much in the a similar vein to what happens in Nuke. So when we're using the uh, merge node in Nuke or when we're using the composite node here, uh, we really do need to pay attention to what's happening with our alpha all the time. So the easy way to see your alpha is over the composite view. You can hit A for alpha and you can see it changes just here. And then C for your color. And... You know, more often than not, when things aren't working out the way you expect, it's because your alpha doesn't look like what you think it's going to. I'm going to put down one called a corner ramp. And so we can move around each corner over here and we can also change the weighting. So it will grow that particular color. I have my corner ramp here and I want to use it to color this. But I'd like to keep the black lines, the darker areas, I'd like to keep them black. On each node, we have a mask input. So the mask input is over here on the right hand side. So let's try plugging this black and white image basically into our mask input uh, so it's doing something so it is masking some stuff off but it's not doing exactly what i expect um so i'm expecting something that has these these veiny lines in there and the reason is uh, as you might have guessed that if i go back and look at my composite here the alpha is not what i expect so i i'm expecting uh, to see the veiny lines here in the alpha and they're not there so that's why they're not showing up so how do we uh, shift around our alpha well so in nuke you would use a shuffle in houdini you use a channel copy so we can plug our image into our channel copy here and the channel copy allows me to move our channels around uh, in this node, you define the target first. So the target in our case is our alpha. It, it, it's what we want. The target is what we want. So we're defining the alpha and then you define the source. We come in here and the source we want in this case is input 1C for color. So target first and then the source. And now if we go and look at our channel copy, you can see, look, here's A, uh, A and C are the same. I've copied the color channel into the alpha channel in this case. And now if I come back down and look at my ramp, yeah, that's more like what I was expecting. So I'm getting color in everywhere other than the very, very dark areas. This particular color ramp here has been masked or limited by our new alpha, which we created inside in this channel copy by copying the color into the alpha. There is a mask tab here and you can actually, like we've explicitly done it here, but you can actually say, well, we could we could have used C as well. So I could, I could turn off the channel copy here and I could use C. Uh, and say use the color instead of the alpha so you can do it that way as well 
Uh, and there's an option to try inverting the mask here as well. So this color ramp here is going to control the higher areas. Let's use this color here to try and control some of the lower areas. Let's comp them over each other. So we'll put A over B here. And it's not giving me exactly what I want. And really, this is going to be a case of uh, an alpha problem as well. So if we go back up and look at this little branch here, and I want to use this to color the darker areas, you can see I've got a color coming through, and it's using this alpha again that's coming through from here. So I need to be more definitive about what uh, needs to be colored. So, so let's come back up here. I'm going to look at my veins here. Really what I want is I want to be able to control the darkest areas of the veins. Try plugging this guy into the composite down here. Again, not exactly doing what I expect. Let's go and look at our alpha for our noise generator. So, and you can see we've just got a white alpha. So that's not going to do anything very interesting. So again, we need to use our channel copy here to copy the color into the alpha. So we could put a channel copy here, or I can come down to the composite node. I can jump to the mask tab and I can say mask input, use C. So I'm just going to choose a more interesting color here. I'm going to choose a darker kind of blue, I think, just to make it more obvious what's going on. And my mask input should be over to C. Now I'm starting to get this darker blue color coming through in the darker areas from my noise generator. So yeah, there we go. So we've got the darker blue areas there. So I'm controlling the darker areas with this little branch here. And I'm controlling the brighter areas with this branch over here. And then we can composite them back together. Let's put down a null here just at the end of this chain. And we'll call this cop out underscore C for color. So what I want to do now is take my color map and put it out onto my model, uh, into my quick material here. Now I could write it out to disk. I could use a ROP file output and I could put it out to disk. And I could write it out in whatever format I want and then read it back in. But you can pump the data directly from COPS back out onto your quick material here. Now the way to do this in this case is to use a certain syntax and this is just one of these things that you learn in Houdini. It's called the op syntax. So you set OP, then colon, then you point towards the null that you want. So in this case it's going to be OBJ. So OBJ up here, then forward slash geo1, then forward slash cop to net one. So cop two net one. And then the node we're looking for is cop out underscore C. And now I'm taking the color map information and pumping it into the base color texture on this quick material. Now you can see it's getting spread out all over the place. And that's because when I think we brought in the original base color texture here, I put down a UV transform. Uh, so if I bypass the UV transform there, now I'm getting the color information going directly onto the relevant areas of my model. Yeah, I'm going to turn off, I'm actually going to turn off the normal map as well, but just get rid of this for now. And there we go. We've got the color map coming through. You will notice if I jump into the top view that the orientation is different than what it is in COPS. If I put down a transform in this case, I was looking for this shape here. Uh, and this is the same shape there. So I just need to needed to uh, f rotate it 90 degrees in Y here. And now they line up. I can come back now and I can adjust the colors. Now, there is a little gotcha here, which is if I said uh, in my color ramp here, so in the higher areas, I'd like the higher areas to be more yellow. So what I could do is come down to my yellow weight here and I can put that up to four and you'll start to see that so it gets more yellow in the higher areas down here. So so it's not updating in the scene view. So what you need to do is give it a little nudge over here. If you tweak any of these values, it will start to update. So the scene view here is not updating when we update our color cop nodes. Now it does update if we come back up to uh, one of these noise generators, for example, and I play around with the the vein spacing here. You can see that that is updating. It's changing the noise here and it's changing the color. So it is respecting those kind of changes, but it is not respecting the color changes that I'm doing as I tweak the values over here. It's a little bit of an annoying got you at the moment coming from COPS using this op syntax. And if anyone knows a way around that, uh, please comment so that we get more interactive feedback as we update our colors. And so we've got a color output now and we have a height map output. So really we should rename this guy to cop out underscore h for height. 
So that's our height output here. So now let's go back and let's start adjusting some of our values to get something a little bit more distinctive. The noises give us lots of detail very quickly, but you need to keep them under control. And to keep them under control, we need to try and aim for something a little less chaotic than what we've got at the moment. So I'm gonna come back up through my network chain here. Let's go back up to the top. So this is the initial shapes that we're bringing in. And this is the initial noise that I'm creating. And I've got a lot of detail here. Now, I don't want to be too precise about it because I don't want to take up too much of your time. But let's go for something a little bit more stylized than what we've got at the moment. So I'm going to lower the frequency here so I get some larger shapes. Now, again, the veins seem very big. So let's try and dial those back a little bit. So the main controls here are the vein spacing, the attenuation and the frequency. So now I'm getting some kind of cracks maybe that are running across this surface. Now the amplitude in this case is how wavy this line is going to be rather than how black and white it's going to be. So I can try and get some nice shapes there. And then I can, if I want it skinnier or wider, I use this vein attenuation. Let's come down and look at our colors. And I'm going to try and make these uh, a little less primary color. Again, a little bit annoying that it doesn't update immediately up here. I have to go off what I see in the composite view. Okay, so it's still coming through. It's very bright over here. Let's go back up and look at what's happening here. So I use this bright blue color. I'm going to change that back down now. Yeah, so something slightly more sandy like that. Let's come down to this composite view here. Yeah, I'm not getting enough of these colors coming through. Let's try and play around with our operations. So I just put it over to subtract here in this case, and that seems to be bringing through some interesting colors. I can dial down the background here. So dial down the sandy color a little bit just to get some more of the corner run coming through. And let's go back over to our quick material here. And if I adjust it now, yeah, now it's starting to feel a little bit more uh, sandy overall. So we're starting to get the colors coming through. Uh, the shadows here that are showing up as I move around is just my graphics card. And I think the fact that uh, when we go back out from COPS here into this height field, we're actually going back out to quite a large size. So this is a thousand units by a thousand units again. So if I get rid of a zero here and I get rid of a zero here as well, uh, now it will be much smaller. Uh, so we're starting to get equivalency here in terms of what's happening with our height map and what's happening with our color map. Let's go and create one more map. I'm going to go and create an occlusion map, which I can put into the occlusion texture here on the quick material. This composite here, which was originally for some of the darker areas, has got a little bit washed out. I'd like to get control over just the very darkest areas just on their own. So if we come back here, let's put down another color. And I'm going to make this nice and bright so it's very easy to see what we're doing. Mask this one off using composite here. And I'm just going to check the alpha. So it's not picking up the darker areas in the alpha. So what I will do in the color here is go to the mask tab here instead of using the alpha. And now I could use a channel copy as well, but I'm gonna use just this one. And now that's more like what I wanted. And so I can invert the mask here, but it's not getting me exactly what I'm looking for. I wanted those darker areas just on their own. So let's turn that off and let's put down an invert node instead. And then I'll be able to do a levels after the invert. I can't, I can't do that within the color node itself, but I can invert it here. And let's do a levels, set my display flag to my levels and I can start to push around the values here. Basically just masking off the very, very darkest areas and then plugging that in. There we go. So now I've got just the very darkest areas on their own. So let's bring back the original color colors here. Now you do get some odd things happening in COPS and probably I'm pushing the colors around, uh, pushing the numbers around a bit too much. So I'm not sure where that green is coming from. Yeah, so maybe I'm just pushing the numbers a little too harsh inside the levels. But this is getting me close to what I want. Now, I don't really want it to be this bright pink color in the dark recessed areas. Uh, so let's go and pick a different color. Let's pick a sort of a darky brown maybe for now. And let's put this out with a null as well. And we will call this cop out and we'll call it O for occlusion. Quick material then I can go and grab this syntax that I had and I'll just copy and paste it into the occlusion texture and I just need to change the value from C to O and now I get some occlusion in here and it gives it more of that kind of stylized look where you multiply the ambient occlusion by the color. I can also do things out in SOPs assuming that I have enough points I can use vertex coloring. So and normally I'd use the measure curvature node and the color attribute noise nodes to get a bit more control. But in this case, I'll just use the labs uh, edge color, 
which is a simplified version of the same thing in OneNote. Uh, so I'm going to plug it in here and let's just take a look and see what colors I can get with this. I want to try and highlight the brighter edges. Uh, so let's go 40, 40 and 40 for now. And let's give it a bright color and just see. Yeah, yeah. So it is coming through. So we're starting to pick up just the brighter edges. Uh, so I can go and adjust some of these values. And let's go and pick a different color. Uh, so we'll actually pick a bright color and we'll change it from linear blend mode to add. So we're just picking up the edges. Yeah, so let's see what that looks like when we plug it into our material. Yeah, so now we're getting some vertex coloring tinting the top of our material overall. So I could happily spend an hour or two tweaking these values for different looks. And really the secret at this point is to go away and get really good reference for what you're trying to achieve uh, and just aim towards that all the time. The important thing is, is that we have consistency across our maps. So as I update one value, it updates across all of the maps. Just to try and finish it out, let's do a quick overview of the system again. I can always come back up here and I can adjust any of the input shapes. So for example, if we wanted to have uh, more larger shapes, we could come back to the grid. Let's say we wanted to have more detail. Uh, let's just double the amount of grid rows and then we'll get double the amount of shapes which should give us more detail overall. So we keep a kind of a consistent look, but we can build in more detail there. We can obviously go and change the original shapes. We were creating these box-like shapes, which is giving us these parts that are sticking up. We could come down here to our height field and we could add lots more detail in here. Uh, so our height field distort is what's kind of warping it a little bit. So let's say we turn that off for a second. We should get rid of the warp. And now we just get those more box-like shapes coming through. So you can actually start to see the poly extrude here coming through. If we turn off the poly extrude here, we'll have a different shape. It'll be more box-like again. So now we're getting the edges of the boxes. So we can think of these as the larger shapes and the larger controls. Then as we come into cops, we get into the more fine detail. So we can adjust, we'll just try turning some of these off just to get a feel for what they're doing. So this is bringing in the larger, more canyon-like shapes, I guess, or the more chiseled edges. This is the vein-like structures, so the little bit of breakup and detail. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you've got a good idea of how you would control the larger shapes, the medium shapes, and the more finer details. Thanks for your time, and I'll see you in the next video.